Hello and welcome back to another episode of Effective Jar Roots. Byron speaking, and this is a series where we uh, read Effective Java and try to apply idioms or items presented here to idiomatic Rust. Uh, however, I'm kind of jumping backwards a bit because I was skipping item 25 altogether, uh, just because it made no sense to me to implement it. But then I thought, well, we might as well implement it, implement the functionality here in the main method in a, an idiomatic way, right? All this stuff here, you couldn't really do in, in Rust and you wouldn't want to do that uh, with the static final fields and instances of functors that happen to be kind of Java's way of closures. But, you know, uh, we could implement a reduce or let's say the functionality. I wouldn't even re-implement reduce here. And I wouldn't deal with uh, with multi-threading or with threadedness at all because that's not the Rust style. Um, but yeah, let's see. I'd say we have a source main.rs here and probably kill the... Oh, actually there is no... It's not on, in Git yet. And we can kill the library here and start very fresh. So here's main. What do we do? We want a, an array of integers, right? So let ints be, well, we just use an array, I guess. That's 2, 7, 1, 8, 2, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8. And that is that. Uh, we could also be precise and say, well, it's use size or it's um, I32 or it's U32. Let's make it, I don't know, U32. We could also make it I32. Then it's the same as uh, in Java, but it's explicit, right? So let's have explicit I32 and simulate what Java does there. And then we do some uh, reduction fun. So let's see how that would be. I have actually no clue really. Um, I, all, all I know is that we have to print something here. <laughs> yeah. And I guess we shall uh, have an iterator on this. Well, we could also do it like this and then reduce. And reduce should take a function that has a... that takes two fields, right? Um, base and item and then we reduce it with the sum um, which is a plus b huh? base plus item and I think reduce also wants to have the base which is always uh, I mean in this case it shall be zero okay so that seems to be wrong but we shall see what it means that's actually check it because it's a bit faster. No method named reduce, I think it's fold. Yeah, I think it's called fold. And that might be it. Cool. Cargo run 47. And fortunately we have no, we have no assertion here. So we don't know what that one expects, but we can run it, damn it, sometimes. I, um, you know, my brain doesn't seem to be active. So 47, that's great. The next one is what? It's a product starting at one. So we can do the same thing. Fold, and now we multiply that. And let's see, yeah, we can, let's implement the other stuff as well, now that we are on a roll. So that's integer min value in Rust. I would be use std i32. And we have i32 min. And uh, that is max, the max implementation. I think it's base max item. We shall see. Oh, it doesn't like it because parentheses. Oh, look at that. Um. Max probably, or no method named max found. Uh, how do we get that? 
I know it's there, I just forgot. Max and min, I think there are maybe even generic methods that do that. I forgot I used it not so long ago. Let's see where max is. STD. So that's the um, min max. So I32. Yeah, so it's comp max. Huh? So that is um, generically implemented. So we use let's use this. Use STD comp. Huh. Oh yeah, on, on float you have this as a as a method. For some reason, not here. But we will just use max like this. Comp max base with item. So this looks very similar now. To um, yeah. So why does that not work? What's his problem? Uh. Mismatch types, really. Why would that be? I32 min, and what does max do? Max is generic. Yeah, let's let's run cargo check here just to see how that goes. So, ah, it's a borrow. Sure, I should have I should have known that. Yeah. So we have to deref it. It's interesting that this works automatically, but I think these um traits actually they're implemented for um borrows as well as for the the type itself the primitive whereas max obviously just wants to have the primitive wants to own it so this is copy right so we copy this into the max function at least theoretically practically the optimizer will have some fun with it uh so we have max no sorry we start at max here no, we start at min and try max. And here we start at max and try. Oh wait, the other way around, huh? So that's min value and we do max. And that's min and we do max. So that way around, I think it is. We shall see. Let's look at the results and let's see if that actually does something for us. Yeah, totally. Nice. Nice and awesome. So that totally works. And this is how you would do it in Rust, right? That's the same thing. And you just drop these uh, closures in there on the fly. Uh, there's no need to worry about performance as, is as efficient as any function could possibly be. Uh, it's probably even um, inlined because the compiler can do that if it wants to. So yeah, that is that is Rust. It's super, you know. Even though it boils down to optim to something that you couldn't write better in C, it's still very nice to write and very, you know, very easy to write. It's super. It's much better, you know. Look look at this. All the other stuff you do to make this fast, you know. Even even if you wouldn't by basically cache these functors, these function objects, you would still have to write all this in the moment you want to have something like that here, right? So if you wanted to have this um, max implementation or this min implementation in there, we could also do it like this. Let's copy that as to not mess with it too much. And that would be the same thing. Like the like what we had in Rust, this would be equivalent. But obviously it looks shitty. Well, let's just say it's far too verbose. And I don't know how the formatting would be would be done here. Is there something like Rust F uh, Java FMT, some Java formatting tool? <laughs> Java FMT. There's something like it. Yeah, because something like that you really really want want to have by now. But yeah, that is, that is, no, that is that, might as well put this here. Um, however, yeah, this is something, look, I mean, it's something you don't, wouldn't want to write. You would probably want to cache it just for the purpose of 
having a nice variable here that you can just use, which is easier to read, but still, uh, no fun. Does that work, by the way? Does that build? If I save it, it does. So we should get the same result if we run it, and we do. Yeah, so that would be this. Maybe you probably would even put it to the far left. Seems to look a bit better. But yeah, you wouldn't do that. And uh, Rust is so much nicer there and still so much safer. It's quite incredible and so much faster. It's, uh, yeah, it's also a bit of a, of a bad comparison because you don't want to really compare these two, especially because they are from different times. Java was conceived in 1990 and Rust first arose in 2010. Right, took it f five years to get to 1.0 and it changed a lot in the process, a lot, a lot. But hey, here we are. And I think I call this a, a tiny little session. Um, so thanks for watching and have a great day.